Hi and welcome to another Carpenter Tutoring Tutorial. I'm Amy and today we are going to talk about how to identify equations with infinite solutions and what that definition even means. So first let's talk about our term infinite solutions. What this refers to is an equation in which no matter what variable value we plug in, the equation is going to hold true. This usually happens because we get down to a place where we have that variable set equal to itself or a constant set equal to itself. So after doing all of your simplifying and solving, you might end up with something like x equals x or 3 equals 3 for one of these equations with infinite solutions. In either case, this statement is true no matter what value we plug in for the variable. In the first case, x equals x, no matter what value I plug in for x, I'm always going to have a value equal to itself, and that's going to be true. And then for the second example, where we have a constant set equal to itself, well, that constant is a constant. It's unchanged by our variable value. And so our variable kind of isn't even in the mix at this point. So no matter what value I plug in for it, this constant equaling itself is still going to hold true. Now that we know what the end result looks like, let's go ahead and take a look at how these equations might start off and when we can start to tell that they might have infinite solutions. In order to do this, let's consider the equation 10 minus 8a equals 2 times the quantity 5 minus 4a. The first thing I see when I look at this equation is that I have my variable a on both sides of the equal sign. So that's something I want to fix right off the bat. But one of my variables is trapped inside grouping symbols. And in order to free it from those grouping symbols, I'm going to have to distribute the number that's in front of those grouping symbols into both terms of the group. So my first step will be to distribute this 2 to both the 5 and the negative 4a in the right side of the equation. This will give me 10 minus 8a equals 2 times 5 is 10, and then 2 times negative 4a will give me negative 8a. Now if you're a seasoned solver of these kinds of problems, you might stop at this point and realize that both sides of the equal sign are exactly the same. I have 10 minus 8a on both sides, and from this moment I can tell that I'm going to have infinitely many solutions for this variable, because no matter what I plug in for a, 10 minus 8 of some number is always going to equal 10 minus 8 of that same number. But let's say we didn't see it at this point. We could continue on and do one of two things. I could try to get my variable on one side of the equal sign, and in order to do that I'd need to use the opposite operation to what's in front of it. It currently has subtraction in front of it, so I would use addition of 8a on both sides. And when I did that, I would actually cancel out the 8a's in both sides and end up with 10 equals 10. Since that statement is always true, I would realize that I have infinitely many solutions. But let's say that we didn't choose to go that way. So let's go back a step and say that we decided to move our constant first. Well, when I look at the 10 on either side of the equal sign, I see that it's a positive 10. So I'll move it to the other side with the opposite operation or sign, which is negative 10. And in both cases, that's going to cancel out my 10s, leaving me just with negative 8a equals negative 8a. Well, we know that that's always going to be true as well because negative 8 times any number is going to be the same thing as negative 8 times that number. Let's say though that even here we didn't see it and we decided to divide by negative 8 on both sides in order to get a on its own. If we did that, we would end up with a equals a and that's going to be true no matter what value of a we get. So you can always work these problems all the way out to the end, but you can usually tell earlier on if they're going to end up having infinitely many solutions. For example, if we go back to this step here, where I see that both sides of the equal sign are the same, even though they are more complex expressions, I know that this is going to end up with infinitely many solutions. When it comes to writing out your answer on paper for an equation like this, we literally write infinitely many solutions or infinite solutions. I hope it's been helpful to talk about the definition of infinite solutions and walk through an example of some problems with infinite solutions together. If you have any questions or other topics that you'd like to see discussed, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoy our content, I hope you'll consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me, and I'll catch you next time.